So good afternoon to our last session for today, I think, uh, unless I misread the program. So this is a technical session with a number of quite interesting talks. And our first one is from the folks at Low Risk. I have Gregory Chetwick here today for you, who is going to talk about building commercially relevant open source silicon uh, and some of the many aspects of IBEX and this. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that we're doing this with commercially relevant because what we really need is, is adoption and not just um, academic prototypes. And whenever we get those translated into, into commercial products, that is a great step. So Greg is a digital design lead at, at low risk uh, where he's developing IBEX and he has been working on the Open Titan project as well. Uh, so he has a background in SOC architecture, CPU design, security hardening. So the, the, the whole list of it goes on with over 10 years of experience in the industry, including at ARM and then Broadcom. So with that said, I give you Gregory. for the intro. Um, it's great to be here. Yeah, just a little bit more about uh, Low Risk, if you, uh, if you haven't heard of us. So we're a not-for-profit that is headquartered in the UK. Uh, and our mission is to uh, enable the uh, kind of wide-scale adoption of uh, open source silicon in commercial applications. Um, so if you consider, say, Linux and it, the position it occupies within the software industry, we would like open silicon to uh, occupy a similar place in the hardware industry as kind of foundational technology that's, that's, that's used absolutely everywhere. Now, this talk is about IBEX, and, and I would emphasize I'm giving this talk. I've done quite a lot of work on IBEX. IBEX has been a collaboration amongst a huge number of people. Uh, so it's not just me. <laughs> uh, there's, there's a lot more work that's been going on that, that you know, other people have been putting in here. Uh, however, before I can, I can get into details about IBEX, I'm first going to have to talk a little bit about Open Titan. So hopefully you saw Dom's uh, keynote yesterday. Uh, and if you didn't, uh, well, it should be a video online, so, so please do go back and watch it. But briefly, Open Titan is a, uh, it's an open source uh, silicon root of trust. Well, it can be lots of things, but this is what we call it at the moment. And if you don't know what a root of trust is, just think of it as a security chip. There's a bunch of blocks in there. Some are security cryptography related, such as like an AAS accelerator. You've got some more usual standard things, uh, peripherals, so you know, I squared C, UART, uh, and so forth. And the, the, the first um, output of the uh, Open Titan project is a, is a discrete chip uh, that we had an RTL freeze for just a few weeks ago in, in preparation for our first tape out. Um, and we're now ramping up on created integrated variants. So these are variants of the open Titan technology they get integrated into, say, larger SOCs. So it's kind of on die, same piece of silicon rather than a discrete chip. And I should mention that open Titan is uh, so fully developed in the open. So you can uh, go, on our, go on our GitHub repository there. And it will, uh, and yeah, you can see us working you know, daily live. Uh, we don't you know, do a bunch of stuff in secret and then periodically send you a tarball. That, that is our live working repository. And it's developed uh, with this uh, technique of collaborative engineering, which is something that Low Risk is really kind of pushing as a way to uh, create these, these open silicon projects. Uh, and we, we have something called the Silicon Commons, which is our method of working practices, which is taken from uh, the, the software industry. We've taken the best practices from the software industry with specific focus on, on open source software and applied them to hardware. Now, lots going on in Open Titan, but at the heart of it, you needed a secure CPU. And this is what led to the development of IBEX. So IBEX came to us from uh, the pulp team at ETH Zurich, uh, where it was named Zero Risky. Uh, we renamed it IBEX. And uh, we've done an awful lot of work on it since. So what it is, open source, 32-bit uh, IMCD core. So multiply, uh, compressed instruction set, B, bit manipulation. Some additional extensions for, for some of the security properties we needed, and you know, also suitable for IoT and general embedded applications. There's quite a lot of bits to IBEX, uh, but some of the highlights here. So we've got EPMP, we've got debug, you've got an instruction cache, you can choose between a two or three stage pipeline. We have a dual core lockstep um, configuration uh, for fault detection. So this is where an attacker um, will cut the top of your chip and fire a laser into it to inject faults. We need to detect those kinds of attacks. 
So we have two copies of IBEX, that, so we can detect if there is a fault in them. Um, and a, a variety of other security features. And it's all highly configurable, so all of these things can be added or removed as you like, and there it is available in the repository. So at this point, you might be asking, so what, you know? There's a lot of 32-bit uh, RISC-V cores out there. Uh, a lot of them are tiny little things that might be good for embedded, and an awful lot of them are open source. You know, wh wh why should you care? Well, the thing about IBEX is, as I was saying, we want to see open silicon adopted at scale in, in commercial applications. And there's an awful lot you need on top of just your RTL that you can demonstrate, run some programs, uh, to actually reach the standards for commercial tapeouts. And a lot of what you need is around DV, the design verification. Uh, and you need to do an awful lot of work here to actually kind of hit the bar that you need. And on top of that, you also need to make sure your RTL is kind of conceivable. You need to ensure it's usable by a wide variety of EDA tools. You know, you want to be using a uniform style. Um, we, we write in System Verilog, so you need to make sure you're adhering to System Verilog best practices, in particular, ensuring it is suitable for synthesis. You want to be linked clean. And your DV needs to be credible. It's not enough to just say, yes, we tested it, it works. You've actually got to demonstrate this. You need to show your test plans, show your coverage plans. We run nightly regressions and publish the results. And you need the project to be active and maintained. So uh, we have code review. We use CI to ensure all contributions uh, are of a high quality and meet our standards. And all of this kind of falls under our, our Silicon Commons framework that we did actually have a poster uh, about. Uh, so if you find that and find the extended abstract, you can read a bit more about, a bit more about the Silicon Commons. So as I said, DV is the, uh, one of the most important parts here. And so, as such, it's been a major focus of our recent work. The way we do it, first of all, we take RISC-V DV, which is a random instruction generator. Um, Google developed this initially. Uh, it is now being maintained by the Chips Alliance. And this will generate all kinds of different uh, uh, random uh, RISC-V programs for you. We then combine this with a UVM test bench uh, written in System Verilog. Uh, this has a whole bunch of different sequences that allow you uh, to, to stimulate your external interfaces. So you've got a data and instruction, a memory interface, you've got interrupts and debug requests, and these, uh, these, um, these sequences allow you to stimulate all kinds of possible behaviors on those interfaces. And then you actually have to check the CPU is working correctly. We do that with co-simulation. So, when IBEX retires an instruction, we step spike, we check that they've done the same thing. And we also check that the data memory accesses match up, which luckily is very easy on IBEX because it's in order, no speculation. So we just need to make sure that the, the, the bytes uh, IBEX stores and the bytes it sees on loads precisely match uh, what, what Spike has done. More complicated cores, this problem becomes a lot, lot harder. Um, you know, when you start getting into out of order, you've got speculative accesses and you know, coherency, et cetera. This is, an this is a very hard problem, and it is absolutely vital that you check it, because it's where a lot of your bugs are going to lurk. But for IBEX, straightforward. And then you've got all this uh, DV uh, infrastructure. Well, you, you also need to demonstrate that you have actually kind of tested all possible things your CPU core can do. And you do this with functional coverage. Um, so your check it, which we've divided into two categories, kind of pretty standard thing to do uh, for CPUs here. We have our architectural coverage. We need to make sure every single instruction we support has been executed. And each of those instructions has all kinds of different cases and corner, con corner conditions, and you need to make sure all of those have been covered. You then have micro-architectural coverage. You need to check a whole bunch of specific things about IBEX behavior. You know? There's a, a variety of stalls and hazards that can occur. You need to make sure you've seen them all. We don't care too much about specific instructions at this level. Um, you know, a, uh, uh, um, an AND and an OR instruction are very, very similar microarchitecturally, but are very different between a loader and a store. We also use cross coverage. You need to check combinations. Let's say in the second stage, you have a multi cycle divide, which is going to get one of its operands from a load, which is currently ongoing, waiting for, uh, for, wait, waiting for the response from the memory system, and then an interrupt happens. Do you do the correct thing? There's quite a lot of things in flight there. There's quite a lot of things you can mess up. Well, we've done that, and we know it works, because the coverage tells us our tests have done it, and our checking tells us that it did it correctly. There's also a lot of uh, complexity around PMP configurations, which we also had a, had a poster on. Um, so again, you can look that up online, find the extended abstract. We've got a, you can have up to 16 PMP regions. Uh, they've all got, you can all have a, a whole bunch of different address matching modes. You've got all the different permission bits. And then you need to see all possible behaviors against this, all kind of pass, fails, and then you've got fun corner cases. Like let's say you're executing 
um, a four byte instruction that straddles a, uh, a four byte boundary, um, and those are two different PMP regions. Do you do the correct thing? Well, IBEX does, uh, and again, we've got the coverage and the, the tests to prove it. And so you have a coverage plan, which is going to um, explain all of these coverage points that you're aiming to implement. Have the actual coverage implementation, again, that's in System Verilog. Um, and then you need a test plan, which is going to specify all the tests you're going to run. They tend to focus on different scenarios, twiddling your random knobs in different ways, that then helps you achieve the full code and functional coverage. And then we need to patch things up a bit with some directed tests. So this is sort of handwritten assembly, or we, some of it's generated by, by some Python programs and such. Uh, and this is mostly around PMP cases, because trying to cover that space with just totally random tests is, is very hard. <laughs> and so as I was saying, we, uh, we run nightly regressions. And this is a kind of key part of the Silicon Commons working uh, practices. So if you follow that link there, you will find the regression that was run sometime this morning. Um, the screenshot here is uh, from yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you can see the git commit it was run against, and each test, we're telling you uh, how many times we run it. So each test run will use a different seed, so it will do different, different stuff, um, and it will, tell, it will tell you the pass rate, giving you all the coverage statistics. Uh, and then for all of the failures, we're, we're telling you what, what, what went wrong. You will notice our, uh, our pass rate is not 100%. Um, and, uh, well, we've had commented in the past, people say, well, I can tell your stuff is real because you've got some actual failures in your test log. Um, and, you know, we do triage uh, and uh, investigate all these failures. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got high confidence that all of the current failures are known uh, issues in the verification environment and aren't uh, RTL problems. So, we've got three fully verified IP. Go out and use it. You can be confident uh, to, 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 to take it to tape out in a, in a big commercial shipping product. Fantastic, right? Well... Yes, but really there's more to it. it. It is a mistake to consider open source, open silicon, as just great, free stuff, go use it. I mean, please do, and you know, you can, you can view it like that. But to make the most of this, it really, you've got to understand it. it's a whole different way of engineering, um, a whole new set of working practices. And if you fully engage with those working practices, there's lots of benefits to be had. So for one thing, um, you know, you've got full access to the IBEX RTL, and you can do whatever you like with it. it it's licensed under Apache 2, by the way, which is a very permissive license. Um, and because you've got all, all of our DV, if you want to, say, make some modifications to IBEX, you can run the whole verification suite and check that it still works. You may need to make some modifications, add some extra scenarios to hit your new functionality and what have you, but you know, that ends up being a minor tweak, and then you've got your customized IBEX, um, fully verification closed, ready for tape out with, you know, not much work. And then the other thing is when you've got multiple parties working together to build something, you can often end up with a better design with kind of less total resource input compared to if you did it all kind of in-house with a siloed team. And we don't have commercial pressure to gatekeep improvements behind yearly releases. You know, when we were developing the, uh, the Bitmanip support, that was just steadily feeding into the repository bit by bit, and you could pick it up as soon as you wanted to and just go and use it. You, were not, you didn't have to wait for, you know, next year's release and pay us another hundred, well, hundred million, you know, hundred thousand um, dollars. Just take it, use it. And you've got freedom to kind of configure things as you want. We don't have marketing and sales teams um, spinning the bingo machine and telling us that, well, we need the, uh, the IBEX A478S, slightly lower performing, but does have the security features, or the, the, the A48, the A480, higher performance with bit manipulation. Great. Well, none of that. It's just IBEX, and there's all kinds of different possibilities you can do with it. The final thing here is that contributing partners are vital, because as I was saying, really, open source isn't free. And by contributing there, you know, I do mean Money, money is very important, and also engineering resources, expertise, compute, tools, etc. And this is what our, the Open Titan partnership provides to low risk. Um, so, final, uh, final plea here is, one of the frustrating things about working in open source is you often don't know what people are doing with your technology, and that's kind of by design. Um, but, you know, I know there's an lot, awful lot of IBEX users out there, but unfortunately I can't splash up a big slide with lots of logos and tape out numbers, because I know some of that, but I, I basically don't know what I can talk about publicly, because most of it's been told to me informally or, or under specific NDAs. And I always talking to more and more people who are saying, oh, I'm using IBEX for that, oh, I've taped out IBEX. So it would be fantastic to hear from more of you. So if you are using IBEX or you're interested in, in supporting our work or helping drive development of IBEX, then please do get in touch. There's that uh, info at uh, email address for low risk. 
Um, and my contact details are here. Uh, and final little hiring plug, we are, we are now hiring. So uh, if, in particular, if you're interested in doing DV work on open source silicon and interested in exploring kind of new innovative ways to do it, then yeah, check out the website, check out the careers. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, I have been uh, Greg Chadwick. So we have a minute or two, so we can take a, a few questions. Um, any questions on this quite exciting technology or actually this quite exciting open source uh, to uh, usable commercial technology experiment? Hey, come on, Alan. You promised me a, a question every talk. architectural compatibility test uh, SIG. How can we get hold of your PMP tests? They are, they are, in, they are in the repository. I can, uh, I can point you towards where they are. Um, they actually, they're partially derived from some tests that whoever did the, um, the ePMP support in um, uh, Spike wrote to, to validate their own implementation. So we pulled in some of those, and we've kind of got our own uh, extra bits in there as well. But it's, it's all available in the IBEX repository. More importantly, even, where can we get hold of the coverage models? So that is it. Part of that comes from Risk Five DV, and part of that, the PMP coverage models are all within uh, all within IBEX. Um, they they're not super specialized to the IBEX microarchitecture, but they're not like complete. You know, you couldn't just immediately apply one to any core, but it could be used as a model for a more generic coverage model. Well, we probably want to actually make it less specialized. Yes. More. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks. Well, on that, I have just one remark. So open source lives from the contribution. So if you have PMP tests mm -hmm. and you're using that, it would be great if you engaged with the, the ACT group mm -hmm. as well and contributed back. We have exactly the same problem you mm -hmm. have yep. at Risk Five <laughs> International. Um, any further questions? I know it's a long day, but... All right, I guess. Okay. Um, that is a great thanks for this talk, great thanks for the presentation, and thank you for Open Titan. <laughs>